Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're following up a build video on the laser cutter and engraver. So you see, uh, basically, we have it uh, set up and cutting. Uh, we do have a different laser on it right now. I'll kind of cover that out in a minute. However, I want to kind of touch on the build a little bit. So one of the things that you see is we now have on both sides the limit switches. I modified the original design of the um, the uh, end stops, actually not limits, well I guess they are limit switches, but end stops um, from the original design and then I also modified um, these flags. I, I simply made them taller instead of having sort of the kind of convoluted um, pieces flipped over and under that they had in the other design, which I guess was okay, but uh, I, I decided to kind of simplify it a little bit and basically use the same pieces as stops. Also because I'm using a little bit different uh, X gantry, um, this model, this also works because if you look on the original, the X gantry doesn't extend as much forward, so you see that, that this one over here will strike the front of the X gantry, this one will strike the back, and so that works where the other one is, the original is kind of kicked back where it probably does not come out far far enough um, on the right hand side and then again we, we put the flags here and I made the flags taller because I can't flip it underneath here and still have the uh, ends of the switches not hit the maker rail so as in the other designs I simply just made the flags um, uh, a little bit taller so it's a little over two inches, about two and a quarter inches, and, and that seems to work. I haven't gotten the, um, the, the the switches overall to completely work. I think I'm going to have to go and, and garble and make some changes. <coughs> Excuse me, but on the back side, uh, we we mounted up the uh, the Arduino and the shield on the power supply back here, so this uh, this cover comes off. Uh, you know, for your purists out there, the, the heat generating components are back on this side, so still plenty of uh, room. There's just some caps and stuff where this is over, so it was strategically placed uh, on here. So, again, we have this set up, this mounted. We cut out um, this board. I think I did a video on it on, on the CNC. It's got a little bit of a handle. The handle actually works because this whole thing is not actually that heavy. I wouldn't overly suggest uh, toting it too much. Because uh, we did use 90 degree brackets underneath here, you can see the screws come through. Plus, we attached it to the top of the maker rail here, so it does have four points of contact to the the, the maker rail. Uh, so, so that works. Add a little strain relief for the power supply. We'll add a little bit more. Uh, again, for the um, uh, you know end stops, what I did is strip back some Cat5. The, the, the plum covering and some K5 and took the conductors out. And so, obviously, four here, four here. I color coded them. Uh, also, kind of worth note the placement, the direction of the placement of the rollers and everything it, it, it is important. I actually did and undid these switches quite a few times to kind of find the optimal position. I am going to change this a little bit to kind of have um, maybe take like a piece of coat hanger. Um, bend it up nicely and, and, and paint it stuff. And it comes up here that holds this um, X gantry wire up because you can kind of see it just drags it around the surface and I, I'm concerned because that paper just sits there or whatever I'm cutting just sits there and um, uh, you know could be moved around if that falls on there so I'm going to tidy that up a little bit. I'm also going to tidy these up with a little bit of straps. I've got zip strips here holding this all together and that works and then once I decide on the lasers or what, what have you, uh, then I'll run the cable back this way. Right now the laser is being powered by a separate power supply uh, than what was uh, uh, done in the original. So uh, just for testing. So uh, and uh, so that's pretty much about it. So now the original two watt laser I had. Uh, <laughs> I actually popped the diode on it. Uh, unfortunately, I was reworking the um, uh, driver board for it, and I think static electricity got it because it just simply didn't work after I 
changed the pins out because it had the uh, the funky white connectors and I replaced them with DuPont connectors and uh, that was a bit of a problem so anyways uh, I had ordered this other laser and uh, I'll probably do a separate video on it and talk about uh, lasers in general uh, I was going to compare the two side by side but can't do that now uh, I'm also debating what I'm going to do for a laser this is a half watt for this lighter paper and stuff, it's, it seems to do well, and uh, uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, again, I think I'm going to do a separate video, kind of talk about uh, lasers in general. So, okay, so this is just uh, my follow-up build. As I clean this up a little bit more, I'll probably do another video too on the build itself as I adjust things, um, and, and you know, just kind of cover them out. But wanted to kind of keep everybody posted. Again, this is this has been a very interesting build. If you're thinking about building your own cutter, laser engraver, this is really the way to go. Um, you know, uh, again, the parts list is out there. I made a little bit smaller than than the one on uh, OpenBuilds.com, uh, and I think this this size is just fine. I'm really not sure unless you were really to you know invest in a three to five watt laser, why you would go with a larger uh, bed than this for the materials, you know, um, because again, if you're going to if you were to engrave a sign this this size, you know, this is basically an 18 by 18 working area. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time because this is moving uh, roughly 60 milli millimeters a second, and that's what it would take to basically burn it. So it's going to run for a day or two at least. Um, and I'm not sure the duty cycle of the laser. Uh, would handle that it might uh, but uh, uh, so uh, again I think it's really a function of the power of the laser and what you want to do with it you know I think this this right now configured like this is uh, for smaller engraving projects is great for cutting out uh, stencils and paper like this it's great uh, doing anything bigger I think is going to be a challenge to have a bigger bed uh, because one of the things that I did uh, and I, I probably will do a video on it. Um, I built it this size because I also I'd seen something on the internet about sintering T-shirts. So what I wanted to do is have this bed big enough uh, because I'm not tiny. Uh, I wear a 3XL T-shirt, so I wanted to be able to to, to lay out a T-shirt and like engrave over the pocket and and that kind of stuff, or center over the pocket I should say uh, of the T-shirt because I thought that was really cool. Uh, or do you know design on the back? etc. So uh, anyways, I'll let you guys know how that comes out or I'll actually do a video on it once I get all this, this buttoned up and we're, we're getting pretty close. I do want to switch back to working on, uh, I got some projects going on the 2-Up uh, which I need to really get going so I can start building some other stuff. Um, you know, because right now uh, the Da Vinci's handling most of the workload of printing the various stuff for the labs uh, to build this. So anyways, wanted to cover this out. If you got any questions, please uh, put them below. Go to my website, uh, DIY3D.com, uh, DIY3DTech.com, sorry, I'll get it right there. Uh, plus, it'll be, you know, linked down below. Uh, go there, ask questions, send me any uh, comments if you want uh, about building this. Um, so, uh, also, uh, you know, please hit, hit like, it really helps us. Again, we don't uh, ask for money for doing these videos. And I can't, I can't tell you how much just clicking that like button helps us, um, you know, in, in views and things like that, which is critical to, you know, make these these videos of value. Again, um, you know, I'm really interested in promoting the home fabrication or the small fabrication concepts, building your own machines and things like that. And, and that really helps us by clicking the like and subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. So, again, appreciation in advance. Cheers and see you in the next video.